Here we're gonna solve a nice differential equation using one of my favorite strategies, which is with a series. So the differential equation we are interested in is y double prime minus x times y minus y equals zero. Furthermore, we've got the following two initial conditions. So y evaluated at zero is one and y prime evaluated at zero is zero. So like I said, we're gonna look for a series solution, which means we might as well start with y equal to the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of a n times x to the n. And now notice immediately, we know that a zero is equal to one, and that's because y evaluated at zero is one, but y evaluated at zero here is a zero. And another thing that we know immediately is that a one is equal to zero. We'll see that a little bit more in just a bit, but that's because if we take the derivative of this series and evaluate it at x equals zero, we get a one. Okay, so now let's populate the rest of the terms that we need. So if y is equal to this, then y prime will be equal to the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of n times a n times x to the n minus one. That's just by term by term differentiation. And here we can start this at zero or one, given the fact that we're multiplying by n. Notice the zeroth term is just zero times some stuff, but we're just gonna leave it like this so we've got all of the structure in there. Now, while we're at it, I want to notice that y prime does not freely live inside of this differential equation, but it's attached to a multiplier of x. So let's go ahead and calculate x times y prime just so that we have it ready. So x times y prime is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity n a n x to the n. That just boosts all of these powers of x up 1. Now we're ready to take y double prime. So that'll be just the derivative of y prime. So here we have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of n times n minus one times a sub n times x to the n minus two. Now I wanna point out that in this case, it will be advantageous to start at n equals two instead of n equals zero. Notice the zeroth and the first term are zero anyway, so we can do that without any problem. But y double prime lives freely within our differential equation, so we probably want to rewrite it so the power of x matches the power of x in the other two terms. And we can do that via a simple re-indexing. So I'll replace n with n plus two. So let's see what that does for our y double prime. We've got y double prime is now equal to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity. Because if here n is replaced with n plus two, we have n plus two equals two, which means n equals zero. Then we'll have n plus two times n plus one and then a n plus two, and then x to the n plus two minus two, which is just x to the n. So now we've got all of the parts of our differential equation, which means we can put them all together. Notice we have y double prime minus x y prime minus y will now be equal to this sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of n plus two, times n plus one times a n plus two minus n times a n minus a n all times x to the n, where I just smashed all of these sums together and then factored out the x to the n. But notice we can simplify this a little bit. We could take these terms and write them as minus n plus one times a n. And then furthermore, since this differential equation is supposed to be zero, kind of on the other side, we've got a sum of all these different powers of x's, that tells us that each power of x must be equal to zero. So all of these are equal to zero. Well, notice that gives us some sort of combinatorial identity between a n plus two and a n. So setting that equal to zero and solving, we see that a n plus two is equal to one over n plus two 
times a n, just like that. So let's talk our way through that. Well, we can move this minus n plus one a n to the other side, then divide by all of this. Notice that the n plus ones cancel and we're left with this thing right here. So that means a two is one over two times a zero. A three is one over three times A one and so on and so forth. But recall that A one is zero. That tells us that A odd is always zero. So let's notice that A odd is zero, which tells us that we only need to look at the even terms. And we can do that by re-indexing this a little bit by replacing N with two times N. And we see that A 2n plus 2 must be equal to 1 over 2n plus 2 times a 2n. So we've got all of the odd terms are 0 and all of the even terms are determined by that what looks like a one-step recursion at this point because this is 2 times the quantity n plus 1 in that index. Okay, so let's summarize what we've got at the top and then we'll finish it off. So far we've determined that the even terms of our power series are given by this recursion. So we've got a 2n plus 2 is equal to 1 over 2n plus 2 times a 2n, and that's for n bigger than or equal to 0. Furthermore, we showed that the odd terms were 0. I've written that as a sub 2n plus 1 equals 0. Again, that's for all n bigger than or equal to 0. All of that comes from our initial condition, or at least the 0 does. Okay, now let's see what we can do with this. Notice we can rewrite this so that we've got a 2n plus 2 is equal to 1 half times 1 over n plus 1 times a 2n like that. But notice that just taking this recursion all the way down, we can get a closed formula for a 2n plus 2. So this is going to be 1 half times 1 over n plus 1 times another half times 1 over n times a 2n minus 2. So that's just applying the recursion one more time. But we can put this together into 1 over 2 squared. I'm going to leave that in there just for the structure. And then 1 over n plus 1 times n times a 2n minus 2. So now let's apply this recursion one more time. We have 1 over 2 squared, 1 over n plus 1 times n, times 1 over 2, 1 over n minus 1, a 2n minus 4. So there we've applied this recursion one more time. But now we can put all of that together. So we can maybe cross this thing out right here and bump this exponent up by one. So we've got one over two cubed. And then we can maybe take this n minus one and think of it as being attached by that term right there. So now let's take that all the way down to a sub zero, which is one. And what we'll see is after all of those steps that this is going to be equal to one over two to the n plus one times one over n plus one factorial. So now re-indexing a little bit so that we don't have a two n plus two, we see that that means that a sub two n can be written as one over two to the n times one over n factorial. Now we're ready to finish it off. And that really comes from the fact that we can replace this n with a two n, again, following from this oddness being zero thing. Okay, so that tells us that y can be rewritten as the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of one over n factorial times x over two, well, x squared over two to the n factorial. That's because we've got x to the two n over 2 to the n, but I can just like use exponent rules to write it like that. But notice that's a well-known power series. In fact, that is e to the x squared over 2. So that means our final solution is y equals e to the x squared over 2, which I think is interesting because that is a well-known non-elementary function. 
So while there's no closed integral for that function, there is a nice second order differential equation that that function satisfies. And that's a good place to stop.